Last week on the Discord server, we were having a great discussion about Wi-Fi and wireless networking. And the question came up, hey, what if we've got thousands of users in a building, one Wi-Fi network or one SSID with lots of APs and that good stuff? How do we make sure that we don't have too many people chunked into like one VLAN when that traffic hits the wired network? That's a great question. And that's the question that you and I get to answer in this video. So let me start by giving you the lay of the land for the network here. I've got VLAN 1, which is my home network. It's just easier to manage devices there. And then I created VLANs 10, 20, and 30 with these IP address ranges respectively. And these are all slash 24s. I then got a 3750X that I got on eBay for pretty cheap. And it has a whole bunch of ports. It's also supporting power over Ethernet. Then I took ports 13, 14, 15, and 16, which is really gig 2, 0, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I connected them over to the wireless LAN controller, which is a 2504 on its ports 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that way we could support LAG, which I'll show you here in just a moment. I also took these two ports, 25 and 26, and I assigned them to VLAN 30, and that's where I put the APs. And the wireless LAN controller itself is being managed on VLAN 1. So in the big pictures, these APs get powered on just by connecting with power over Ethernet. They boot up. They have to discover where is the wireless LAN controller and then build a CAPWAP tunnel over to it, which is over here on VLAN 1, and then start providing the services. Also for the access points, I got some 3702Is that I also got on eBay. So let me share with you some of the details that I had to configure on the switch to provide the DHCP services and the routing and, oh my goodness, wait till you see this. Option 43 did not go as cleanly or smoothly as I thought it would with iOS's DHCP. So here on the 3750, let's do a show IP interface brief. And what I did here was I created four VLAN interfaces, switched virtual interfaces on this switch, and I assigned it these addresses respectively. So it's basically going to be the default gateway for VLAN 30, VLAN 20, VLAN 10, so I set this router up as a DHCP server for VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30. And I supplied its own IP address as the default gateway. And check this out for VLAN 30 where I put the access points. I added option 43. Now, a couple of things I want to point out about that option 43. Why do we need it? Well, option 43 tells an access point what is the IP address of the controller. So it can call home, sync up, join that controller, and become part of the family. And here's the syntax. Option 43 then the keyword hex to specify it was hex, and then I put in this value right here. In fact, I didn't put the periods in, it added that for me. I also tried a couple other options with the keyword IP where I, I thought I could just put in the IP address, but I was looking at the log files on the access point and it was not having it, it could not locate it. So here's what this is. This is a TLV for type, length, and value. The first character, I just looked it up online, is F1 for the access point that I'm using, and then the length is four bytes long. So I put two characters there with a zero and a four representing four bytes. That's the IP address is four bytes long. And then I put the value, which is this bad boy right here. And the way I calculated that was I took the IP address of 192.168.1.77, which is the IP address of the controller, and I got out the scientific calculator. And this is built into the current version of Windows. I went to this menu and I said, I want to look at the programmer option. And then I, I went to decimal and I put in 192. And it said, great, in hex, that's going to be C0. So I put in C0 for those first two characters. And then I cleared that off. And I said, okay, the next octet, next byte is 168, which is in hex A8. And I put that in. So basically, this is just C0880149 is the hexadecimal representation of this IP address. Tricky though, uh, right here, where it has the 01, it's going to be two hex characters representing 8 bits. So if the value is 1 or something only takes one hex character, put in that leading 0 so it knows exactly what you're talking about. So once I put this option in and then the access point renewed its IP address, it could find the controller. It said so on a console message and then it joined the controller and we were off to the races. So just be aware that you may have to do a little bit of trickery if you're working with iOS's DHCP services to hand off that option 43. These interfaces 13, 14, 15, and 16 that go over to the wireless line controller, let me show you those interfaces. And here they are in all their beauty. So these four interfaces go over to the wireless LAN controller to its four interfaces. 
And so here what I did was two basic things. Number one, I specified that they were trunks. Now my switch, it also supports ISL. So I specified dot one Q so there wouldn't be any mistake there. I told it was a trunk. And then I told this interface, 13, 14, 15, and 16, those four interfaces, that they were going to be part of this ether channel group number one. And then I used mode on, which is the correct mode to use if you're doing ether channel over to a wireless LAN controller. And the question might come up, well, Keith, if this is what you did on the switch that goes over to the controller, what do you need to do on the controller to go ahead and use link aggregation? Great question. Let me show you exactly what we would do. So here on the controller itself, let me just check real quick, make sure my access points are there. Great, they are. They both checked in. If we just click on the controller tab right here, and then down here on the left, click on ports. Just want to verify that all four ports are connected. That's great. These are connected to those four ports on the switch. And then if we go to general, so on the controller tab, you go to general, right here there's an option for lag mode on the next reboot. Now what I did was I simply said enable, it said, hey, please save this, reboot the wireless LAN controller, and now it's gonna be active. And that's exactly what I did. So that's why it says right here, link aggregation mode is currently enabled. So the benefit of this is all those four ports, currently they're all happy, happy, but if we lose a link or there's a problem, link aggregation will use the remaining interfaces to go ahead and still communicate. It's wonderful. And now the part that we've been waiting for. What if we have thousands of clients that are all being connected via wireless when their traffic hits our networks? <laughs> we don't want all that traffic, all those users to be in one single VLAN. How do we spread that out? And the answer to that question is to use interfaces and interface groups. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So here on the wireless controller, if we click on the controller tab, over on the left, we have an option for interfaces. Now, what I did was just a few moments ago, I created three new dynamic interfaces. Let me show you how that would go. We'd slide all the way over to the right. <laughs> I've, I've made this screen fit so I could present it. Click on new, and let's say we wanna create a new interface. We'll call it interface four, just for grins. And I will put a capital I just to keep it consistent. And then it's asking, oh, hey, this new logical interface, what 802.1Q tag, what VLAN ID, do you want to associate with it? So if we were gonna support VLAN 60, we could put a 60 right here and click on apply and boom, we now have this new interface called interface four, which is gonna be supporting VLAN 60. Now here under the physical information, because we're using link aggregation, we don't have to say use port one or port two or port three because our wireless LAN controller is using link aggregation and all four ports are available currently. And then if we scroll down here, VLAN identifier 60 because we put that in earlier. And we're gonna create here what's, I'd like to think of it like a switched virtual interface on a switch where it's just a logical IP address in that space. So if that is the 10.60 network and we're gonna use dot .254, we'd put in that IP address that represents this wireless LAN controller on that network. And then we'd put in the mask. And then we just put in the default gateway address for that subnet. And then the primary DHCP server. In my environment, I'm using my multi-layer switch as the default gateway and the DHCP server. So we put 10.60.0.1 for DHCP server, and then scroll up and click on apply in the upper right hand corner, click on okay. And if we go back to interfaces, we now have the management interface, the three that were there from a few minutes ago and the one that we just created. If we want to get rid of it, we can just go over here, hover, and then say remove, click on okay and boom, that logical interface is no longer there. Oh, I deleted 30, bummer. All right, I'm gonna delete the one that we just created. Two's enough for what we wanna demonstrate anyway. So we have interface 10 and interface 20. Now, if we went to wireless networks and I have one wireless network, Wi-Fi one, and we edited that Wi-Fi network, here under interface, interface groups, the default is management. That's our management interface. However, if we wanted to associate this Wi-Fi network with interface 10, which is associated with VLAN 10, or interface 20, which is associated with VLAN 20, we can simply select those. But if we wanted to load balance, let's say we have a two or 300 clients that are coming in and we wanted to load balance them across maybe uh, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, here's what we could do. Instead of selecting one of those here, here's what we could do. Go back to controller and the left-hand side, go down to interface groups, check this out. So we'll click on interface groups. There aren't any by default. And what we'll do is we'll simply say, hey, we wanna create a new group of interfaces and let's call this our group. And then we'll put VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. <laughs> we, we could say VLAN 32, but I deleted that interface. And then we'll click on add. And then we have that VLAN group. And now we'll add interfaces. So we could add interface 10. It's showing up here. Click add, 
shows up in the list. There's interface 20, click on add. And now this interface group called our group includes the logical interface 10 and logical interface 20, which effectively means VLANs 10 and VLAN 20. So we'll click on apply and then we'll go back to our wireless LANs and then we'll edit our single Wi-Fi network. And then what we'll do is we'll say under here interface or interface groups, We'll hit the drop down, we'll say our group. And then we'll click on apply. So now what's going to happen is as that traffic comes in, the wireless LAN controller can load balance or round robin or use whatever mechanism it's going to use to send some of that traffic and associate some of that traffic with VLAN 10 and other traffic with VLAN 20 once it hits our wired networks. So there you have it, my friend. We have the ability with interface groups to associate that with an SSID, and then as traffic comes in, the system, the wireless LAN controller, can divvy up that traffic respectively between the two or more interfaces that are part of that group. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Meanwhile, be well, be happy, and be nice to everybody. Bye for now.